We're live. Hello, everybody. Welcome to <laughs> I Back That With Glory Hound and Dr. Glory Hog. You got to say your name first. You got to be like Dr. Glory I'm Hog you, and point at you. Dr. Glory Hog and she's, Glory Hound. She's training me up so I can take over the stream for when she leaves me. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why she's training me. You're guarding your wallet. Smart move. <laughs> Very smart move. Hello to our chat today. It looks like we have Battle Cry in chat, Petter in chat, Best at Star Trek, Omar, Andrew. See? I think I already said Andrew Petter, says, right? Hello, everybody. Andrew said they're trying, uh, trying to get through the first scenario of Kingdom Rush. It's not as easy as some people say. <laughs> we weren't the only ones who lost it a bunch. A fog of divorce happens then. <laughs> For any of you that watched our Whistle Mountain last night, I am happy to say that it's still out on the table because I do plan on getting a rematch. We're gonna get a rematch today for Whistle Need Mountain. A rematch. Yeah, because one, one. the Gotta doctor. Get that rematch. You should, have, should have had some stuff happen. That's fine. In Whistle Mountain. Not everybody's seen it. <laughs> we're one one. <laughs> oh, hi, Kitty. Yeah. It's gonna be lonely here with when everyone else leaves. Also, aww. Yeah, it will <laughs> so be very lonely. Yeah. It will be. It'll probably just be me and Petter, honestly. That's it. That's Best about is, all I got. This is Star Trek says, my wife won't play Fog of Love with me. Probably better off. Fog of Love was... It was very innovative. Nothing like very having innovative. a fight about Ikea when you're, like, playing a board game. <laughs> no. <laughs> it was... It's the only cooperative... Well, no, I can't say that. I was going to say, it's a cooperative game where Dr. Glory Hog chose the one card not to play cooperatively with me. So it's not just me, everyone, Okay. Not just me that has a non-cooperative co-op co game happen, okay? <laughs> That's kind of nice. The water fan. The water fan. Yeah. Some little water jets and everything. Hold on, I'm ready for TikTok now. Aw, Andrew says, we won't leave you, Battle Cry. Aw, you guys are so sweet in chat. Obviously, I'm never leaving those great bike stories. See? See? You got your Dr. Glory Hog supporters out there. <laughs> <laughs> Three out of our fourteen, our seventeen hundred people that follow us. We'll take Nailed it, and then we'll duct tape fatal paper cut to a chair and keep them as well. That's there you fair. go. That works. That works. And then you have a full audience there, so you're good. You're Four good people? to go. That's you're good fine. to go. I actually think I did better in small groups, honestly. <laughs> Hello, Patrick. How are you doing? You did not miss anything. We're gonna we're gonna start like no, apparently right. Apparently, I've been talking for three minutes about nothing. Right now. Right now. About First nothing. up, we have Block and Key. This is by Inside Up Games. Like block. And key. I don't have a key thing. So this is for one to four players. Should last about 20 to 40 minutes. This is a puzzling game where space time is super important. Like where things are in space is super important. Also, like the opening of this box. Did you see the opening of this box, Doctor? The box? That's the box right there. Yeah, I know. You. Like, it opens up, and then, like, you just flip it around, and it becomes, like, the little, like, stage for it all. And I actually love this in so many ways, because I feel like it puts it up at your eye level here, which is the important part, because that's where you're supposed to identify sure. everything at. So, Doctor, what are your first thoughts on this game? This 100% looks like a game that you would probably really enjoy. That's my thought. I think... <laughs> We, we actually have a copy of this that we're going to play. We're going to be playing, yeah. Um, we might end up doing like a, a special live stream on Monday instead of Tuesday just to play it before the Kickstarter ends. Absolutely. It's very unique. I don't know. I won't know until I play it. A lot of these kind of abstract or puzzly games, I kind of have to play them first to really understand if it's something I'm going to enjoy or not. Mm -hmm. I think it's very innovative the way they've done it. I like how they did the little hieroglyphs or the little things and all the different relics where you're looking at it. It kind of gives you clues and how you're unlocking things as you go along and then you've got harder and harder patterns to do. I like that I'm looking at it from this direction, and you're looking at it from this direction. And so, although I'm doing stuff that might help you, you're doing stuff that might help me, but we have completely different things we're looking at. <laughs> I think that's very cool. I'd have to see it. These types of games are ones I have to just see like in action to understand how it actually really works. Because I look at it and I go, oh yeah, that looks pretty cool. I've never seen that before, but I don't know what it's going to feel like playing it. Okay, all right. So, let's see here. Oh, yeah, okay. So... Gonna turn this into Jenga with the quickness as Nosferatu clown. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Any game can be Everything Jenga falls if you play over. Hard that enough. is very true. That is very true. Any game's a legacy game if you're a bad win if you're a sore winner or a sore loser. <laughs> oh, no. Just rip the board. Legacy. Andrew says this looks really nice and has some nice table presentation. I appreciate yeah. 
so much the table presentation on this because it brings it up to that next level. If this was just a game on this flat level playing field and you were looking at it from a downward angle, this game would be completely different. I don't think that some people who have spatial awareness problems would be able to identify everything in the same way. Like they would really have problems with it. So I 100% uh, yeah. love the fact that they put this up at a higher level at your eye. So you're not even having to worry about the top portion of it until you're actually placing your cubes here. So when you're placing these here. That's a good point. I didn't think about that because I do struggle with the social, with the right spatial whatever the spatial whatever spatial <laughs> spatial placing awareness placing things in a three dimensional space okay yes. <laughs> i do struggle with that like i just have a hard time like visualizing it in my brain so i kind of have to like physically have it in front of me even like something like this i typically like whistle them out and i have to like take my little polyominoes and like it's better if i can place them on the board so anytime there's a polyomino game where they're like once it touches the board it can't be moved i'm like no i need like <laughs> To be able I need to, extra like, placement. <laughs> physically manipulate it to be able to understand what the heck I'm actually trying to do to see all my options. So I think it being at eye level will help that because then you're just looking at a big picture. <laughs> and now I'm just trying to do pattern recognition, which I can recognize yeah. a pattern. Yeah. I can recognize a pattern. What is it? What are you trying to say? I'm just saying like... there's a pattern <laughs> oh, of what's been going on <laughs> on camera. So yeah, not my speciality. Specials are not my speciality. And here's the thing. Whenever you're placing the cubes on top, you do have certain rules that you have, a, have to abide by when you're placing those cubes. So, you don't have to. It's your game. You do what you want. Well, I guess that's true. <laughs> so it's not necessarily like, oh, I'm just throwing cubes on top there and they match stuff. No, you do have to plan, okay, I need these cubes and then they need to be at this level in order to create these cards. You cannot mirror cards whenever you're placing them but you can rotate the cards to kind of make those, but you are basically trying to make this pattern in a two-dimensional space when you are facing it, and then you're trying to build it, though, in this three-dimensional space, which I think is really, really interesting, and each person's board is completely different because of the angle that things are being placed on. Like, this is amazing. We I'm play, so excited. We play enough games that I'm not even sure what Battle Cry is ripping on me for. What player powers did I forget? Did you tell me already? I don't even remember. <laughs> That's how badly I forgot those player powers. I forgot what game I forgot them in. So uh, now Sparathu says, 3D chess from Star Trek, right? So you, it's got some 3D chess-like aspects to it where you got to go ahead and go on all these different playing fields in order to go ahead and make sure you're placing <laughs> things correctly, okay? Better says, like, we know you have issues when you can't mirror stuff. That's true. <laughs> we yeah. watched my city. <laughs> I'm doing quite well on that. We played a lot more games, and I'm doing very well you on are. City, You're doing is very surprising good. because... Yeah. You can't plan as well. You have to, it's based off what gets flipped out. And I think that's why I'm doing better because it's a reactionary instead of you planning it out way ahead Absolutely. Of time. Now, the starting price for this is $43, which I think is like an incredible steal for this game, honestly. <laughs> like, it's 40, it's a $40 game. Oh, yeah, You're getting all those, good. getting all the blocks in there and everything. And I love play blocks. Yeah, and I love the inventiveness of it opening up and how it all gets put together. It's super stable whenever it's put together and everything because the boxes just drop in there and those little sides hold on to it. Like, so much thought was put into this. And then, Doctor, did you realize that the hieroglyphics on the side of this right here yeah. tell you how to place, like, what the placement rules are and stuff? And, yeah. like, all this stuff on the sides that you're looking at, this is, like, your player mat, too, yeah, you know? Yeah, it's, like, informational. Right. And it is, still has that... I think that we kind of glossed over the fact that when there's the tile, when the blocks are underneath, you're still picking a row to grab from. So there's oh, that yeah. aspect too, where you're drafting right? out that of a drafting? row and going like, ooh, I think she might want these. I'm gonna grab this out of this row, or I want these. I think it'll be interesting to play. When we play it, we'll have to like set it like as a diagonal, like a diamond, so that I can be like looking at it oh, from here. Oh, definitely, yeah. From here, and then you're gonna have to set up four cameras. <laughs> I thought about that. I thought have about to have that. A drone <laughs> That circles it so everybody can kind of see what you're seeing, what I'm seeing. Maybe we'll have a camera. That just rotates around the what board about, as we do it. What about a camera that we just have loose, and then we just hold it up, and then I'll be like, flip it, and then people can see what I'm looking at. That might be a really good idea. And see what you're looking at. And then they can see all of our computer and wires yeah. and shenanigans back here. Yeah, so. I'm kind of excited to be able to show everybody how the spatial awareness portion of this is. And I'm excited to try to go ahead and show this to you we'll all to live. Out something, yeah. Like, I'm really excited about how I'm going to make Ooh. all this work and everything. You guys are going to receive we'll lots of GoPros. behind stuff. <laughs> yeah. We'll have GoPros, <laughs> and then you'll have to follow us on Instagram and watch that live feed where our GoPros are going so you can see what we're seeing while we're doing it. I like this. How well would the board hold up after the table flip? I don't, I don't recommend well. that. Yeah. I don't recommend I that, everyone. Cardboard. Yeah. I, I, yeah, that's not... 
not good. Uh, it hasn't been reinforced with game trays, so I don't know how well it would do no, after that. That's not good. But it's I like... wouldn't put your cat on top of it. You know, no. Things. Yeah, no, I wouldn't do any of those. <laughs> I would totally do a drunk. The first... room is like a 10 by 1 we foot would room. Need... Yes, I am accurate with those measurements. It's Listen, like 10 by 1. We would... <laughs> it's very small. The drone would be like... <laughs> bouncing back and forth like a... Like a Roomba caught in a hallway closet, just bouncing back and forth. <laughs> you would need, like, one other person to control the drone. Because I'm not controlling the stream, controlling a drone, controlling all the other cameras. Controlling a doctor? <laughs> controlling a doctor. <laughs> yeah, no, that's not happening. You don't even control me well enough as it is. <laughs> a cat would go in the middle and not on the top. It's a perfect space for your for cat. That. Yeah, your cat would think that you're paying attention to it as you're, like, doing stuff above it. It'd be like, oh, I'm awesome. Okay, so Patrick says, it seems interesting, but I think I'm covered with the Spatial Tetris game with Project L coming up. That's understandable. I like this one almost better, though, just because yeah. it does take on that 3D plane of everything, and I really, really love the presentation. There's no way that you're going to set this up and people are just going to, like, walk by your table, you know? Yeah, like, at your house, yeah. people will be walking Random by people. your back window, yeah. looking and they'll in, be like, peeping, and they'll be like... What you doing in there? I see you're playing a game. And you'd be like, get away from my house. I have a gate. I live in a gated community. We don't. I live in a gated community. They'd be like, I jumped the fence because I heard this game was being played. It does have some table presence. Yeah, it At does. At a convention, I could see people coming over to see what you're doing. It's kind of like, it reminds me of like a puzzle you might run across like in Skyrim or something where you're trying to like get the puzzle to match up or like in some kind of like. I don't know, some kind of dungeon crawly puzzle thing where you're just like, oh, now I gotta make this puzzle it does. to get the door to unlock to go through the next room. What they need to do is incorporate it with that show from Nickelodeon <laughs> where, like, the Temple Adventures or something like that. Oh, and then yeah. whenever you open it, if you do the puzzle wrong, slime should just pour on you. Aww. Aww. So Andrew says and they did some videos of the durability and it seems to hold well. That's nice. lovely, super lovely to hear. And who said it was the Cat Throne? Oh, yeah, the ultimate Cat Throne from Nosferatu Clown, right? telling you like i would happily move the pieces off a little bit and have my little kitty cat curl up in there and then i can stare at my beautiful kitty and then i can stare at my my game at the top like that should be a thing this is I'm a down little behind the scenes guys <laughs> before we had a cat she used to talk about me the same way <laughs> Whatever. then we got a cat and then she's like oh i love you little kitty good night and i'm oh. like i'm right here i'm still awake she's like i said good night <laughs> that's it honestly i think the only thing that's really holding this Kickstarter back, which the Kickstarter is still doing really well, is the fact that it is a hugely spatial awareness sort of puzzling game, and that is hard to put a game like this into perspective for gamers because hmm. it is, like, in the presence of the game is where you're really going to be able to feel this game. And this it's hard really to bring well that. on TikTok, I think. Yeah, I need something. What? what? Oh, God. Sorry, I've been oh, watching God. a lot of TikTok. Too guys. much, I'm too sorry. much. I don't like this project, says Just Joe Blogs, and I don't know why. Well, that's not, not helpful. Very tell helpful, us Joe. How, why. You've got to tell us the reason why you don't like it. <laughs> well, I'm interested enough to play it, so let's just put okay. it that way. Well, we're going to play this on Monday or Tuesday. Whenever we get the event up, you know, make sure you're subscribing to our channel, yeah. make sure you're clicking the bell. And then you can see what and it then, looks like. Yeah, and then it'll come up for all of you and give you like a little reminder, so you can go ahead and do I that. I do feel like this is the week of games for her, though. It seems like most of the games in this genre are all like the games that she typically leans, for, leans towards, and I'm like, okay, okay. And Keep your secrets, then. That's what I would tell this temple. <laughs> Petter says, yes, it feels like Puzzle in Mist Riven, the game series. I love that game series okay. so much. So yeah, good. I think this should like, be the year of the slime. Or like I agree. the Legend of Zelda Water Temple or something. Like, that's what comes to me when I see this. Like, we got to move some blocks around and stuff. you got to make some things happen. Like I think if you added, every time you unlock a key, if you played the, the music from Zelda, <laughs> you'd be like, oh, all right. <laughs> this is what I needed in my life. So, pro tip, when you can you're do home, that at pretend home. like you're playing yeah. Zelda. Uh -huh. Get yourself a little Triforce, a little cardboard Triforce, and hold it up, like, above you. That's well, what you do. Dale, so, I think that normally spatial awareness is a problem that I struggle with, but when you're looking at something, like, kind of top down and it's in front of you, it's different <laughs> than when you're looking at it in front of you. I think in front of you will be easier to recognize the patterns than it is when yeah. it's, like, laid out like this. Or especially when it's laid out like this, and then you're on the side trying to figure out how the pattern works, but you're, like, not directly in front of it. Yeah. I think that would make it harder so i think this would actually make it better because it is directly in front of you it's like you're looking at a picture and you're yep. like oh i need to have an l 
and I need to have another L, mm -hmm. right? And that makes a square. You're square. Yeah. No, I like it. I a think... loser plus a loner equals a wannabe. Sorry. What? Loser plus a loner equals a wannabe. I think there's more to that, that thing. So I still remember stuff from like six. Are you grade. okay? Yeah. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> oh, that's what, what are you talking it is. about? It's this. It goes a loner, a loser plus a loner equals a wannabe McDonald's worker. I think is what it was. It was sixth grade. It was a wild time. The 90s were crazy. <laughs> Why are you being mad at me? What is that even supposed I to don't mean? Know. Why is that even relevant to this, this game? Because I was two L's. Being... And I was like, oh, that's a loser plus a loner. Oh. This is the little mouse maze that Dr. Glory Hog's <laughs> mind runs through whenever he's looking at stuff every once in a while. I don't know where that came from, everyone, and I apologize in advance. It's, hot in here. <laughs> it's like the bicycle story all over again. <laughs> hey, you leave my bike you leave my bike story alone. Listen, that's just oh how my, my brain God. works. If you don't like it, deal oh, with it. Oh, okay. So, Patrick says, get this game if you want to increase your score on IQ tests and spatial awareness, visualization puzzles. Absolutely. This is definitely that sort of game. It's for anybody who loves puzzles in general, like puzzling games. Like, this is going to be for you. <laughs> Patrick says, that's why I put song lyrics in the chat to distract me. <laughs> that's, it works, too. It works. All right, everyone. So, Doctor, would you back this game? Chat, would you back this game? I know some of you already are. I'm on the fence, but since we have a chance to play it, I'm kind of reserving my judgment for that, I think. Okay. I think it's one that you probably would enjoy more than me because you just tend to like these types of games mm -hmm. where I just don't like abstract puzzle games as much. So for me, this would probably be a, a try before I buy. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. It's a Greg, says Petter. Yeah, that's, that's a good try. one. That's a good one, yeah. Try before you buy, I'll yeah. pass on that one. This is, let's see here. Next... The next game inside the doctor's mind. Everything is so, like six degrees of separation with Kevin Bacon in my mind. Or like if you say something, I have to go through like the six different associations to that thing. Like I'm over here talking about thinking about random commercials I saw when I was like in fifth grade. Gillette, the best a man can get. This is a game I'm really excited about. I want to get this game. It's forty dollars or it's forty three dollars. I think it's going to be a really fun experience to play. I think it's going to be amazing, amazing for kids and stuff like that. Like. You know, that IQ test and doing that spatial awareness stuff, it's good for any sort of kids, like cognitive abilities and stuff like that, and oh, just the placement of it. Sometimes. Like, it's going to be great. It's going to be fun playing it you dang with parents. kids. And Stop it's going to be teach me stuff with games. challenging enough to play with adults, where if you have other adults that love games that are going to give you a puzzle to figure out then this is going to be the game for you. Like, this is the game I want. I'm really mm -hmm. excited about it. I'm excited to play it. I cannot wait to play this on stream. Like, I am so not excited. Surprised. Like, I knew for sure you were all over this one. <laughs> Let's see here. Jim says pass. Omar says pass. Joe says you're on the fence and you're having it. Go, <laughs> go at me. All in good fun, Joe. <laughs> uh, Andrew is backing. Andrew is and backing. So is Aaron because it seems Absolutely. so unique, which, or Erwin, sorry. And? That makes sense. It is unique. I don't think we have anything else that's like this. You just tend to like the puzzles more than me. I think we've all discussed how I handle puzzles in Skyrim. I go, how much health click, do click, I have? Click, 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 click. How much damage does a fire done. trap do yeah. to me? I'm just going to run through it <laughs> and just drink a potion. So Aaron says, back even my mom who loves puzzles can play this. And I think that's 100% it. You are going, this is going to be an easy setup to be a gateway game as well as it's going to be a game that people who love puzzles are just really going to fall in love with this game, I think. I so, like Nosferatu, whose kid probably isn't even born yet. Just says, if my kid wants game, they can get a job. <laughs> Give me that Give zombicide. Give me that zombicide, that's fair. <laughs> that is rough. That is tough. Oh, it's square. You're going to the glory bear. It's Minecraft, aren't you? Yeah, Absolutely. Very it. similar. It's, this is Minecraft, kid. Yeah. Then, totally. you, then it's like, boom, then they're here, right? I mean, anything that resembles Minecraft. It doesn't even have so, to be Minecraft. If you talked to me a year ago, I would say 80% of all conversation I have with my kid is this one time in Minecraft. Right now, we're at a 90%. Did you see that one TikTok? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I did not. Yeah. And then it's like this whole conversation where she describes it in, de in depth. <laughs> An in-depth description. TikTok that she's ever seen. <laughs> All right, it's next intense. up. Next up, we have Caper Europe from Keymaster Games. This is for two players. It should last for 25 to 35 minutes. Here, 
you are a thief and you are going to be in a city and you're going to be stealing things, which, you know, I mean, like, what else would you be doing as a thief Especially like in, the in 60s. a city? Like, it's like the old art, right? Yeah. It's got like a really cool art aesthetic to it. Not anesthetic. I know you <laughs> art to anesthetic it. to it? <laughs> yeah. I think it looks cool. I do feel like it reminds the art me is of very being cute. like in an old James Bond movie or something. Okay. All right. As you run around and you steal stuff. And you've got cool ways of doing it, too. Like, you've got your tuxedo. You've got your suction cup scalers, which I think every kid wanted suction cups that they could climb up a building with. Now, realistically, as an adult, I know I would get tired about halfway up a building. I'd be like, this sucks. Get me down. <laughs> but as a kid, I felt like I could do that. Just... <laughs> Petter, they need to have a card in there where you can steal the moon. That would be fantastic. I feel like that would match up perfectly with it. That would be pretty good. <laughs> I think what's most interesting about this one is it's actually a drafting game. Yes, it is. So it's a two-player It's two player only. It's about a 30-minute game, and you're drafting. And it's made by Keymaster, who made Parks. That's right. That's right. That's so right. I feel like, based off of what I found for Parks, where it seemed like it was pretty simple to get into, but there's a lot more depth there than you realize when you play Parks, I'm kind of excited about this one. I like drafting in general. So being able to draft and then it's made for two players where you're like, I'm going to keep a thief and pass it over. And then try to remember what other thieves that might come back my way and see what new thieves are being passed to me. And then that kind of whole process mm -hmm. of the metagame of the draft. If you're a drafter, you understand the metagame of the draft where you're like, okay, here's oh, what yes. the chances of what's oh, coming yeah. back. I'm going to take this because although it's not great for me, it's way, it's really good for them. And then you're doing the same thing with gear. But you also have to have your money to buy it too. So you have to make sure that, like, what you're drafting, you have the money to pay for and everything when you start getting into gear and everything. So I really, really enjoy that puzzle of, okay, I've got three coins. How do I spend them to get the best bang for my buck? And then it's area control after that. Yeah. Because you're trying to have influence on all these different areas and getting bonuses for these different areas. So you're trying to get your thieves to the right spots with the right gear to have the majority in these different areas to be the one that gets in there first and steals whatever first. I think it sounds kind of cool. Doctor, you did an excellent job of explaining this game. Because it's my favorite. Is it? Yeah. Is this the one? This is your favorite yeah. for the week? Oh, yeah, it is. Spoilers. It oh, is. my gosh. It is spoilers. I think, I think the Why art's is this? cool. It's okay. going to be a cute little box. I, just, I like drafting. And then it has area you control. You do like drafting. And if you want to play area control, I'll do it if there's drafting involved. Okay. Like, All we right. even had fun with that one that we played, the Jixia Academy. I didn't like the game, but I liked the idea of like the drafting in it and then trying to control areas with your different characters. So for me, that's just more interesting. So Petter says halfway up the building with the suction cups, it'd be about five feet. And you'd yeah. be like, oh my God, this yeah. sucks so bad. Listen, I'm listen. out. Young Doctor out. <laughs> was very fit. He was not. But in his mind, oh my he was like, oh, suction cups will make it easy, like crawling on the floor. Yeah. I know now as an adult, since not, I've climbed not things, as good, yeah. and I've done rappelling and stuff, mm -hmm. yeah, it's not easy to climb things as much as they made it seem in the mm -hmm. shows. Where they're yeah. just like, bloop, 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 bloop. That's not real. You're not doing that. Nosferatu says, you wouldn't steal a car, don't steal movies by downloading. Well, depends it depends on the on car. The car. No. Yeah, and that's fair. No. Was, <laughs> was the movie already running when I came upon it? That's not on me then. They left the keys in that movie. Is that what we're going for? This is another that falls under the Greg for me, but I really do love the aesthetic. <laughs> Says okay. better. <laughs> I like I like Battle Cry's opinion here, which these are all get my friends to buy them games. There's a lot this week mm -hmm. are games that I'm really interested in playing, but they don't have that Kickstarter FOMO that we're looking for, okay. right? And but, I think that's that's definitely a thing to be said because I think you get some extra okay. cards with this one. Walk and Key gives you some extra cards, I believe. Also, it's like the UV I spot think, coating and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, I think they're all yeah. very small increments incremental things that you're getting by backing these campaigns now here's the thing though inside up games and Keymaster games are smaller game companies and yeah in the end nothing that was oh. well that was originally why people went to kickstarter was to get these little games started from smaller game companies and i still believe in that and i still believe that games like this need all the love that they can get because down the road, you know, 10 games down the road, they might be making like these, you know, knock them out of the park games. So funding them now is going to help yeah. them in the future, you know? Like, That's so fair. backing them on Kickstarter does matter, you know? Still, still, you That's know? Fair. That makes sense. Yeah, backing them on Kickstarter. I mean, come mm -hmm. on is going to make zombie side no oh, matter yeah. what. They don't care what you're doing. That's on besides probably going to be... This game might not get made if it doesn't get funded, for example. At Barnes & Noble later on. Like, that's well, not a problem. So here's the other thing. This might be in Barnes & Noble because Parks is in Barnes & Noble oh, and in Target. That's true. So Bar I don't think Parks it, did good. I think because of the price margins on it, it was able to get in there. 
So I'm interested. I'm interested because it is a smaller company. They got into there once. They had a really good overall package with the game trays and, and the production quality of they Parks. They did a good job. But like Parks was price, fantastic looking. It was a really good deal. So I'm kind of more interested because of that. And this also, which we didn't mention, this game used to be called <laughs> Mine. And then it was redone as Caper in 2018, I think. And now they're redoing it as Caper Europe to like help clarify things, to give it extra stuff, and then to kind of deluxify it. Okay. So, and it got better. Like mine got like a six on BGG, then I think it got like a seven point something <laughs> for, for, for Caper. And now it's Caper Europe, and it's Keymasters doing it now. And so I'm following the timeline. This is like its third iteration. I'm assuming that they really nailed it down. This Petter time. says an unattended car is like a duck in a park. It's, free. it's just free. I don't think that's how that that's, works. It is. <laughs> Don't, don't take legal advice from oh, me. Oh, okay? gosh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Our dog is digging the China again. Stop it. You know China's not directly beneath us. You're going to hit the ocean, bro. That's right. And it's not going to be cool. There's going to be floods. It's not going to be good, okay? You're going to ruin so, the ecosystem in Arizona. This one for me. I really love the drafting portion of it where you have to go back and forth with somebody. So you have those cards in your hand. You're like, oh, I'm giving them these cards to choose from. Like, they're going to pick something out of here. Like, those hands go back and forth between each other, which is such an interesting drafting mechanic when you're doing that, you I know? I love drafting. I hate drafting a big multiplayer game with just two people because they usually don't account for that. Right. But this is right. a two-player game. It's made for that. So I'm assuming it's going to be very tight. Or at least just, you know, like, when you draft with, like, say, seven people at a table and stuff, things you might see right now like you only have like one choice you're one chance to pick something you don't get to create like that bigger strategy of any from anything as opposed to having a very small enclosed group of people with like two mm -hmm. or three where it's like you know those cards are coming back around so you can try to start planning for things and be like all right i'm going to take this one and then hopefully this will come back around or you'll remember what everybody chooses and stuff because right. there's a fewer group of people so i love that because then the gameplay goes from like, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm just going to choose this. Hopefully something good will come down the road to, yeah. all right, I'm going to choose this. And then I think they're going to choose that. And then I'm going to get this back and I'm going to get this. Because they don't know what I chose that first round. You I know, that sort of stuff. seeing like eight total cards. So you're yeah. Seeing the, I think if I remember right, you're getting to draft three of them. And then we'll, the whatever's left gets burned. So like I'm going to get a pick out of mine. Right. A pick out of yours. And then I'm going to get a pick out of what's left out of mine again. So right. I know. And then you're burning those other ones. That. Exactly. And mm -hmm. you're going to try to maximize that because they all have like bonuses if they go to certain places. So you, you <laughs> want to draft for the different places you want to fight for. And so if you start off and you're opening hand with a bunch from like one spot, you're like, okay, well, here's the areas where I want to fight for. And you got to remember, whenever it's a two-player game like this, there's going to be like five spots you got to figure out how to be the best in three of those spots while your opponent can only be the best in two of those spots. And that always makes it very tight. And so I'm interested in that that play. I'm interested to see more of this game. So, chat, would you back this game? Doctor, would you back this yeah, game? Yeah, this is the one I'm most excited most about. Most excited it's about. it's drafting. It's got some area control. It's a two-player game. I think it looks good. For me, I think this looks like a fantastic game. However, uh -oh. I thought Parks was too light for me. I like think Parks is a really a cute game, game yeah. but I felt like it was lighter and I don't want to run the risk of this being a lighter game as well, you know, because I feel like the area control portion of it can be light and that although I like the drafting portion of it, I don't feel like the other part of it is going to be as heavy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm laughing. Not sorry. <laughs> like this is the kind of game you get to show off to your friends to show how sophisticated you are, but you never play it. <laughs> You don't know how to play it. You're like, oh, You're not look good. at this game. It's so beautiful. Yeah, so, that's why we have the fancy Takanoko to be like, this is the other type oh, of games I look play. At this, look at this gigantic Takanoko. Ooh, yeah, I bet you want to play this. Too bad. That's not what we're playing tonight. That makes sense. So Andrew <laughs> wants to see some gameplays of it. I think We Play Games is going to be doing it a review or a playthrough of it. Something along those lines. I know Keymaster isn't a super big company, though. So <laughs> I'm interested to see where this one goes. See, Yusuf agrees with me. So I'm going to pass on this one, too, because same reasons of, for you, of you. Yeah. Okay. And so it just seemed a, on a little bit of the light side, which isn't a bad thing, because if you play light games or you play with people who love light games or you want a filler game, because this one is in that 25 yeah. to 30-minute game, like, this is going to be for you. It's $39, like, and the art looks amazing and stuff. I just don't know if necessarily this one is personally for me. Like, I just don't feel like it's 
touches on enough of the things that I love maybe at the can, depth that I love. Maybe we can find a way to play it. Play it ahead of time. That would be decision. amazing. Yeah. This is another Greg, says Petter. Let's see here. Might if it shows up in retail. Absolutely. Let's see here. I love the drafting, but currently two-player only games are not for me. That's totally understandable, especially if you have lots of little ones living in your home and stuff that you play games with and stuff, or even just lots of roommates in living in your home and you want to play games with them. <laughs> Petter makes a good point, which is always kind of interesting. My standards for picking it up at a local game store versus picking it up on Kickstarter are completely different. Yeah. There's many games that I'd be like, yeah, if I saw this in the store, I probably would just buy probably. it. Probably. I'm like, oh, 40 bucks? Yeah. I haven't played this game. Looks cool. I'll try it. But Kickstarter is really different. I think the biggest <laughs> difference is, is that you come for the FOMO. You yeah. come for that fear of missing out. The what exclusive, what cool stuff am I getting? What blinged out version of this am I going to get? Like something like, say, um, a deluxified version of like a Honey Buzz versus one you might get in a retail store. You feel like, oh, man, I got some squishy amber and I got this other stuff like our honey and I got all these cool coins and things for getting right. the deluxe Kickstarter version. It makes it easier to back because you feel like you're getting something super unique that nobody else is going to have. And I'm 100% like okay with that but I still believe in supporting like those smaller game companies which no, I, I feel like Key Master Games still fits into that category. So that's especially why if it was me <clears throat> who was interested in the game I wouldn't wait on this one. But that's just me. Everybody can make their own choice. <laughs> Ciccone Moon, what's going on? Hello, so what's our hello, next hello. Game? Okay. Oh, I know what our next game is. Next up, next up, we have Ragnarok. This is by Great Fox Games. It is for one to two players and should last about 20 minutes. I think it's funny that these are two completely different style games, but still in that same sort of like price range player range and time which i think is kind of interesting because we well, have actually yeah we had blocking key yeah like, and ragnarok are all like 40 you know, all of them ish dollar games and they all kind of have like these little bit of similarities between each other but they're all completely different okay? okay all completely different games so doctor what are your thoughts on this game i like <laughs> the theme i mean i like viking themes in general right like i like norse mythology I got to watch a video of Alex from Board Game Co. playing it with Rena, his wife. Okay. I believe that's his wife. Yeah. And uh, it was kind of funny because they don't know the mythology at all. So they were playing oh, with Keegan and Moody. <laughs> you know, the two yes, Odin's the ravens. Yes, the two ravens, yeah. And they were like, I don't know who these, they were calling them crows at first. They're like, yeah. I don't know who these, ra like, oh who these gosh. ravens are for. What they mean? I'm like, those are Odin's ravens. <laughs> They're very important. It's like knowledge and stuff, right? Oh, absolutely. One's like memory and one's like knowledge and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, absolutely. The dude poked out his own eyeball to get smarter. That's dedication. It is dedication. I would poke out my eyeball to, get, to smarter? get smarter. And then I would look like super awesome evil person with that eye patch. Here's the twist. I'd have though. the eye patch with the skull on it and stuff. I think he would look really good in the eye patch, actually. Yeah, I totally. I would I rock the eye patch. I would Let's rock see. the eye patch. <laughs> I think. The trick is, is that once you poke out your own eyeball, you realize it didn't make you smarter, but you have to tell everybody that it did. Oh, definitely. At that point. Oh, definitely. Because you're like, no, I no, poked no, out no. my own eyeball for no reason. You have to tell everybody, oh, yeah. it made me smarter. It was oh, my quest for knowledge. Absolutely. You don't tell anybody, ah, I was playing around with this stick and I poked my eyeball <laughs> You make you don't a, a tell story that. where, like, the raven came out and mm -hmm. pecked out your eyeball, and then he ate it, and then he, like, told you something really yeah. important, but you could never share it with the world. Right, because they, like, would, they wouldn't be able to comprehend yeah, it. It's above yeah, them. Yeah, absolutely. Here's the deal. My kid mm -hmm. poked herself with a, with a pencil, like, right here in the eye. Near the, near the like, eye. I don't, near like, the playing eye. with it on her desk, like, did some, I don't know. The kids were being dumb. Their kids are kids. <laughs> I mean, I've done dumb stuff, too. But, like, right there, and I, I thought to myself, right then and there, if that eyeball falls out, we have to make an epic story. Oh, absolutely. Something That's along what the happens. lines of, like, 100%. I fell in the, the alligator enclosure and he, like, at the ate zoo, my eye. Yeah. and I lost my eyeball, but I killed the alligators with my bare hands when I was six <laughs> years old. Better Something says, like because that. Because you realized how dumb it was yeah. to poke out your own eyeball. Yeah. yeah. You, have to yeah. Tell people make, you have to tell people it makes you smarter. Every time I've broken a bone, I tell people it's from something epic. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I've only actually broken two bones. <laughs> I can tell you about it, though. You guys want to know how so, I broke my bones? Just oh. FYI, the uh, thing does not actually spin. Okay, this is just a yeah. 3D render spinning, so don't get too excited because, you know, we're looking out, out for those spinning games, all right? <laughs> I can see putting this one. So one of the interesting things about this, if we're, talking with, if we're not talking about the gameplay at all, because who cares about the gameplay, <laughs> is that all your little figures and all those little rocks, they yes. fit inside the tree trunk. <gasps> So amazing. Like, oh, I hope, I wonder if I passed it already. Like, right there. so good. Look oh. at this. Look at this. That is pretty cool. 
I love this idea so much where they made the storage for this like perfectly in the bottom portion of this because it makes complete sense. It's going to protect all the figurines and everything. It's going to make sure they're not, oh gosh, not rolling around all over the place. Like genius. That was a stroke of genius right there, okay? So as far as like the gameplay on this game here, you're going to be moving. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Patrick's like the tree. <clears throat> you're just still. I know what it's called. <laughs> Okay? Not everybody wants to get super in-depth with the Norse mythology, okay? I watched all four... I watched the first four seasons of Vikings, they okay? I feel the like I tree. know a lot. I played Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I'm pretty well... <laughs> You're well-versed I'm in very well -versed. Norse mythology. Okay, yeah, yeah. Come on. It's on the History Channel. You know it's true. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be moving your... And this is based with... But, from the designers of Santorini. Yes. That's a lot of a lot of Santorini. aspects of Santorini in yeah, it with right, moving these when figures Santorini across. Has the different gods. I think this kind of goes to that level. Like, like to you, that calling. You have like basically every one of these these characters that you're gonna play with is gonna give you kind of like rule breaking changes. So like if you're playing with Hugin and Mugen, you're you're basically get only two characters out instead of three, but you're able to move and drop a rock at the same yeah. time. Where normally you can move and then drop a rock. Move, and drop a rock. So they could go move, drop a rock, move, drop a rock. So they basically get to move, move drop twice. A rock, move, drop a rock. Yeah. Move, move drop, drop a rock. Move, drop a rock. Move. move that you got to do that whenever yeah. you're playing. You have that's to what if you you're do. With that yeah, character. absolutely. So like that's kind of the the different bonuses you get. So they're all different. You know, I think that part's interesting because you can play differently every single time because they're always like a rule breaker. Like mm -hmm. every one of those mm -hmm. cards is going to let you kind of change the way the game is played mm -hmm. slightly. Let's see here. Actually, God of War was pretty good. A crash course. Still have the Neil Gar uh, Garman book. Yeah. Standing in the closet. Okay. That's a good book. Let's see here. We cut down the tree of life to make our game. Oh, yeah. so sad. Hello, Chris. Welcome to live. How are you doing? Yours? Absolutely. So, okay. We've always made it on time to live. Just, I feel just like saying. Nosferatu was commenting about the, uh, the cartoony art. The I really think to it. it's a callback to that Santorini because right. if you're... They were kind of silly like what Greek? Was he any Greek? Yeah, it was so. like Roman, like Roman and Greek looking. So basically, if you're calling back, you're saying, hey, these designers from Santorini, and they're trying to get that Santorini crowd to also buy into this portion because it has a little bit of a characteristic. Maybe it looks a little bit like it. So I feel like that's what they're trying to insert into here to create a draw for that. And that's maybe why they chose that particular art style. Let's it's be smart. Real, it's too. smart. Norse mythology is very brutal. It's a lot of blood, mm -hmm. spit. Like, well, and like sacrifices. So the only way you can make that have mass appeal is to kind of make it cartoonish, right? Because if you made it realistic, none of these people would have looked that good. They would have. I mean, if he's missing an eye, I'm sure it'd be all scarred up, and not, it would not be great. It's a very, it's an unforgiving god system, right? Their gods were like not chill. Their gods were just like sometimes I'm here, sometimes I'm not. When I'm here, I might mess with you, make you kill your whole family. What? and then leave well they like make let you make your own mistakes and they're like yeah that was dumb yeah. they're like you could have helped me and they're like well prove that you're ready for it you know santorini was not a kickstarter project it was not so, so yeah that piggy card is where it's at scroll down a little bit everyone wants to the, see that pig look at that pig in this game here which, that's a fine we, looking pig we still haven't talked about how the game works oh. so in this game here you're gonna be moving your characters across the board, you're going to be dropping rocks down, and you're essentially trying to create areas that are closed off with your figures inside of them, and then you get points based off of the how large of an area that you are controlling with that, which I think is really interesting because you have it's... To sing, I like big areas, cannot lie. <laughs> When I and then you're using all these different characters and stuff, their special abilities to kind of manipulate those rules in it. I love the art. I love the callback to Santorini. I love, ooh, look at this cute little dragon. Look at, he's so cute. Oh my gosh. I he's didn't realize hat, they had so hat, many add-ons here dragon. that were going to be yeah. ex the exclusive. Is like, that a frost giant down there too? Um, yep, yep. Look at that. This seems another like another example of a game that's 100% up your alley. Because I know you really like Santorini. And I've played it with you, I think, like three times. But I know it's a game you would play a lot more if you could. Which is yes, interesting because you're would. like, I will only play games that are two hours or longer or games that are 30 minutes or less that are abstract. What? That's Santorini was on Kickstarter in 2016, was Maybe. it really? I don't remember that. We picked it up at a store. Yeah, I don't remember at that at all. We went to a store, we picked it up. It's no big deal. Huh. Huh. NVD. MPH, Neil Patrick Harris. 
Huh. Well, I don't think we covered it on our show. It, we must not have covered it on our show, because mm. I have no recollection of that. No recollection, Petter. So basically, the way it works is you're blocking off areas, and, th and then you have to control those areas. So if you're able to block off, say, like a section of six, and your person is in there, and other people are in there, then you own that area, and you'll get six points. I don't recommend blocking it off like this person is, because I feel like they're not going to get many points when you block oh, off Oh, if you like want to see funniness, watch uh, Board Game Go play it. Like, Rena wrecked him. Oh, really? Yeah, they played <laughs> they played two, two matches in 13 minutes, and she wrecked him. Yes! She was just like, boom! And she dropped him yes. in the spot and locked him in. She locked up two of his characters, so they never even just left like, the starting spot. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, Sam, you got wrecked? And the whole time she's like, I don't know how I feel about this game. But then they play it like, I think they play like twelve times or something like that. And she's yeah. like, he's like, you say that you don't know how you feel about it. He's like, but we've played it twelve times and you keep going, well, one more. Yeah. He's like, so I think you like it. So I'm so, like that sometimes. I'll play a game like nine times. I'll be like, I don't know how I feel about this. And she's like, you keep asking to play. And I'm this like, is available on Tabletop Simulator. So if you are a try before you buy sort of person, you can oh, do yeah. it right there, which is really awesome. And this one actually would be easy to learn because it's you move in a straight mm -hmm. line. Kind of think about like a bishop in. Chess, right? You can move like a diagonal, any kind of straight line, or like a rook. Mm -hmm. I guess because you can go diagonal or straight, but or like a queen or something. Uh, queens are diagonal. But anyways, you can go <laughs> forward, backwards, whatever. You can do what you need to do, and then you can drop a rock somewhere that's like adjacent to you, or also oh somewhere on that straight gosh. line. So you could go forward and then drop a rock down here. Okay. You can do all kinds of stuff like that. And you're just trying to block off sections and then control those areas. So it's area control at its heart through abstract movement. This is a fair statement. So just Joe Blog says, unfortunately, I won't back any projects from Gray Fox now. After the issue with Reavers, when they said it wasn't financially viable to reprint a card, I supported that because the cards were fine, but that a lot so of craziness happened with Reavers. Yeah. With that one. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, even from the game tray side, there was changes made and they, you know, used rubber bands on the trays, which broke a bunch of the trays. And we were like, why did you do that? Nobody told you to do that. And the factory was like, what? We thought it was a good idea. It's like, well, you broke them all. So yeah. they're being reprinted. Yeah, there's stuff a lot happens. of stuff goes into all of that business. Stuff yeah. happens. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. Uh, he's saying that oh, they didn't okay. show that they learned sense. from the quality assurance issues and they made a joke about it later. That might be true. We haven't backed a ton of Gray Fox stuff, but I we think... do have some Gray Fox stuff that we like. Like we have, well, I think the big one we have War is Champions. Of... War of the Worlds. Was that Gray Fox? Yeah, that was Gray Fox games. It might have been. I think that's Gray Fox I know games, the right? Champions of Midgard is one that we have that we like. Yeah. Yeah, they're a bit all over the place with their projects. Well, I know that's that fair. they're going to be doing, what is it, Last Light, too. So I'm going to be backing that one for sure. Uh, this yeah, one I do want to back. We liked Last Light. I want to back this one. What do you think, Doctor? And chat, are you backing this? I, honestly, so I'm on the fence about this one because I think you'll enjoy it more than I will. Yeah. But the fact that it plays so quickly is a helpful. I, I know that if we don't back it now, you're probably just going to get it at a store anyway. So I'm kind of just like... Stop the middleman and have it delivered to my house <laughs> and get a few extra cards. But here's what would actually, here, this is so shallow. What would make the difference is if, if that pig was a Kickstarter only card, I'd be like, we have to back it. But it, since it and comes then with either version, the pig. it's the pig if it that comes with did either it. Version, yeah. I'm just like, whatever. Mm -hmm. There's not enough pigs in games, okay? There's mm -hmm. not enough pigs in good games. I love, okay, so look at this. The retail oh, rune stones are going to be like this, but then like... The gray fox ones, the gray are, gonna fox like ones are going to be like this. This is the exclusive. Which With means, this exclusive I feel like hot. that means that it might be printed hot. overseas by different companies. Yeah. And it's going to not have those 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 blue ones. Mm. So, mm. it's a, it's a fast one the wins least. expansion. If I'm going to play an abstract game, at least it's $45. Fast. I'd say definitely go ahead and try it on TTS if you're interested. If you're on the fence, okay. So Santorini means nothing to me, and I'm turned off by the art. Totally understandable. I love Santorini, so this for me, I was it's like, oh my gosh, an abstract game. it's area control Santorini, yeah. <laughs> Ender says, I like the quick play, so nice, and light games for work evenings. Absolutely, I feel like this is going to be a game that my, actually my kid is really, really going to like, because me yeah, and my kid oh, love playing area control games with each other. And abstract. And abstract games with each other. That's like, true. that's our jam together. You guys together. play Hive. We do. You guys play chess together a lot, too. Yeah, so like... Which I, like, I'm not against, but I'm never like, yeah, let's go play chess. Yeah, that's a huge, huge one for us. Is I'd rather play, like, an, like a, an arena style or a dueling style game than chess, even though chess kind of is, in a way. I'm on the Zirconium Moon says, I'm on the fence, but I'm leaning towards it more and more. Yeah, Play that are, TTS. Some people are meh on the art. The art Play isn't like a selling point for me, but it's not enough for me to not like it I either. I like the art. I think it's fine. 
I think, I think it's some fun. of it looks better than others. It's that, you know, really it's big fun. head, small body thing. Mm -hmm. Listen, some people say that I have a really big head and a small body. That's never been said. <laughs> what does the gray my, fox my say, doctor? My doctor actually said the opposite. He said, doctor. your body is too big for the size of your head. You need to work out. That's sad. What? What? Does the gray fox say? Ding, 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 ding. That's ding, what ding, the fox ding, says, ding, ding. not the gray fox. Is the gray fox just older? We used to have a guy when I worked at T-Mobile that would steal all your activations when we were commissioned. We called him the Silver Fox. Because you always had to watch that guy. He would steal your commissions. And so you would look back and you'd be like, uh, Lloyd, you didn't activate that person. He'd be like, oh, what? Oh, I, I didn't realize they were your customer. <laughs> yeah, he knew. Thanks, better. Now that song's in my head. So Jay Peter says, Doc, did you back Hogs of War? That's a lot of there pigs was in that one. There a lot one. of pigs in that one. I was super on that one. I wanted to back that one so badly. I and Doctor was, uh, was like, no, no. I think I tried to, uh, I think I used the line of, do our people want to see You're not stream? a huge war game fan. And that was a heavily like war sure. game-ish sort of game. And that was just not, that's not a selling point for Doctor. I have to talk Doctor into war games. Yeah. And you... Either love them or you hate them whenever we play them. Like that's War games are tough. They're, yeah, that's it for you. They'll never give you the feeling of walking through Baghdad. That's so true. I just That's true. I'm like, why? Yeah, it's I never get that excitement. I, I'm gonna be honest with you. I've always been an infantryman. I like being on the front lines. I like the idea of protecting people. So being a general in a war game always just makes me feel like they're so frivolous with their troops, and it just pisses me off a lot of times. That's fair. I used to love playing yeah. Command & Conquer. When I play Command & Conquer now, and I'm just You're watching like... the people get mowed down, I'm like, cool, 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 cool. But it cool. was a pig, says Jay Peter. <laughs> <laughs> that might even make it worse. I'm like, no. Not the pigs. Oh, no. I got in trouble. One, We were playing one game that was a war game that had characters that I got too attached to. I think they were like dogs or something. And I remember like I lost because I got too attached to the dog trying to save it. And she was like, if you would have like sacrificed that dog, we could have like survived. I was like, but the pupper. <laughs> Not the pupper. I was like, I'll die for this dog. Priorities, okay? That's true. All right, next up, we have Tiny Epic Dungeons. This is by Game One Games. It this is one four. Draw? I haven't seen this one. One to four players. Oh, okay. <laughs> It'll be about 30 to 60 minutes. This is the next in their tiny little series of games here. So you're looking at a, a game that's series. around $25 to $30. So a lot like of them now or in something? a little package. There's a whole lot of stuff on this one it's here. A whole lot, of, whole lot of games. Let's see here. Okay, so Nosferatu says, I want to know all about this upcoming game, debating on backing. They, we are going to go, you know what, this stream may possibly go a little bit longer because we got a lot to say mm -hmm. about this game today, okay? But I think we're going to start out with just talking about the gameplay here. So the gameplay in this here, you are going to be dungeoneering with a bunch of other adventurers through this dungeon. You're going to be flipping over tiles, and then you're going to be doing things in the dungeon. I'm assuming there's traps, bad guys, like all sorts of stuff happening in this dungeon. You've got to find your way out. And then you have this like whole separate game afterwards, which is you fighting the boss in the game. Right, and I know there's this whole like lantern thing or lantern or oh torch yeah that's thing right that your torch goes as out as time goes on the torch can go out and you can yeah. lose because of that which yeah. is like a timer which is always nice on these types I of like games. that a lot so you just run exploring around. right and then the bosses are like linked to the dungeon itself uh -huh. so they're kind of like when you're playing a boss battle in like say a video game where you can't kill the boss until you do certain things mm -hmm. you have to actually lure the boss to certain rooms to weaken it in order to actually be able to fight it which is mm -hmm. kind of cool i like that aspect of mm -hmm. it so let's see here. Petter says, did anyone let Fatal know this stream was happening? Well, I, <laughs> I don't forgot. know. I don't think so. Best of Star Trek says, no, this is a no on me. Tiny ep a tiny game didn't like epic dinos, so not again. Totally understandable, but I have to say that there are definitely some tiny epic games that are that I like more than others. Right. And that's just kind of how like, none of them game. are the same is the problem none of them yeah. have any the of the same, same mechanics designer, but that's it really none of the same mechanics aside from like maybe using like your main board to like move things up and down to keep track of stuff like each one is different so i can't fairly judge one tiny game off of another one because they're just too different you know Let's see here. McDaniel says, this might be my first Tiny Epic game, although I'm interested in others as well. Looks like the most appealing to me. And yeah, if you like there. dungeon crawling games, it's probably oh, yeah. good. And it's small, which is nice. You can take it with you. I think, does that detract from it somewhat, though, the fact that it is small? Because most of the dungeon crawlers we see are these big epics with huge minis and like these big bosses and these big sprawling maps. So playing this on a smaller version, do you think that might 
take away from the overall dungeon crawling experience or is it nice to have a dungeon crawler in a small box? I think having a 30 to 60 minute dungeon crawler is That's an amazing nice. introduction to dungeon crawling games. That's true. Because this is a game that if you're trying to get your kids to go ahead and play dungeon crawling games that are more advanced, this is a perfect place to start. This is a dungeon crawling game if people are not wanting to spend, you know, three hours going through a dungeon crawl with you, then you're going to be able to show them this one instead. This is a dungeon crawling game you're going to be able to take to a game night or to a night, you know, out on the town one day, you so know, do, so do you think that you're going like, to be able to play. Do you think this one's like medium weight then probably? Probably. Like it's probably going to be overly complex, but it's, it's not going to be like just a simple like a kitty one either. Flipping sort of dungeon game, and you're going to be able to upgrade your characters and stuff Which like I that. I do like that you have different clans, right? You have like yeah. the bear clan, the jaguar mm -hmm. clan, the phoenix clan. So like that part's really cool. Okay, so Tiny Epic uh, Games have never interested in me, but this one does. But do I need to get the Kickstarter version? Absolutely, Petter. Yes. If you are in any way interested in this game, you get the Kickstarter version for the, the Tiny Epic series. You get the deluxe. Their deluxe is five dollars more usually. Because the amount of stuff that they offer in their deluxe campaigns is vastly different than their base box that you're going to find. Yeah, okay? I've never bought a Tiny Epic base. I've mm -hmm. always got it from Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. I have Quest in the closet, but yet to play. I bought it because people said it was basically Zelda. To me, if I want a dungeon crawling, I want big boxes, says Patrick. That I makes sense. That. I think Absolutely. that could be a thing because I know that I've shipped it from... I haven't played as many Tiny Epics this year because I used to take them with me to conventions all the yeah, time. And since we, we haven't gone to conventions, mm -hmm. I've got my full table, so I would play a bigger game a lot of mm -hmm. times. I do usually like the style of Tiny Epic games, so we've, we've actually backed pretty much all of them. I think we maybe only didn't back one out of since I Tiny Epic so. Kingdoms. I think so, yeah. And that was because we just like didn't get to it. I think we had missed it, just it was tactics, sheer time it? and stuff. Which yeah. we ended up still getting a copy of it to play. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we just missed it for whatever reason. I forget why. I think so, we just forgot to back it. Dang it, I was gonna, I had a point. I was going to say, and I can't remember it. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I totally forgot. <laughs> well, so with gambling games, it's always tough. So I want to be very clear. I have like a... Oh, did you get it? I remembered it. Go okay, it. so uh, I've had some good, like, talking from some people in the community who actually have the game and have reviewed it and played mm. it and everything like that. We've gotten some good feedback in the community with it. There is one particular person that we know that is a diehard Gloomhaven fan, and so they go especially after the big box, very thematic like dungeon crawling games they usually play solo if they can Take and then the too, right? yeah and then they play with other people on the side and stuff with these games and they like the game there's a person who doesn't like dungeon crawling games and they like and they liked it so, so you're talking about the person that has like two game tables one that always has like tainted grail gloomham and always set up on it, and then the one that they actually play games with their friends on. yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, there's one. I, I haven't met this person, but I know the legend of yes, this person. Yes, the legend of the person. And they have enough, they have enough funds <laughs> to have a table just for whatever dungeon crawler they're in, mm -hmm. open at all times. That they solo play. And, and then solo that's play. Thing, and then they yeah. have another table whenever people come over and they play, you know, oh, let's play cooperative Tainted Grail yeah. or whatever. And so they thought this one had enough depth into it to love it and be able to play it based off of like their previous experiences, as well as somebody who didn't really like dungeon crawlers to be able in to get general. into it and enjoy this game like it seems like a really interesting in the middle part right here right mm -hmm. let's see here so your stuff says i'm wondering if i should get it or wait for the retail or get the deluxe pack on the bgg store if i would you just can afford it now just get it now yeah. i mean it's yeah. 30 dollars mm -hmm. for a dungeon crawling game you're never mm -hmm. going to get that and this is their first time having minis too which is interesting i liked the item mini meeples myself where you had a little meeple that held the little Big sword. And oh chainsaw, yeah, those whatever. are awesome, right? But so I interesting. And why they went this route, but I'm yeah. kind of sad. I kind of liked that. Like the little unique, item meeples. That was a unique game one thing. It would have been. Get. So, Doctor, did you want to start the whole other portion of this? Sure. Yeah. So the other the other aspect with this, which is something I actually brought up to her attention, because I'm on board game Twitter all the time, social media, social media, right? All the different times and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I want to be very clear. I have a personal connection with the team that made this game. Not with Scott Alms so much, but with gambling games. I see them at every convention. We hang out. We've gotten beers together. We have you know, always get to play their games and everything. The thing that was brought up, and some of it has been changed, is that 
the just the female art on it was not the most they just could have done better and this is actually if you're looking at the art now they've actually changed this is this. the changed art for this it. is the better version of it because it was different before this particular character was basically didn't wear pants they had like buttless chaps going on where it was just butt hanging out for the mage and the character i mean all the characters you can see it they're still very sexualized for female characters this character here had a spotlight just on the chest and didn't have the shirt that she's wearing now it was just completely open so i think although the artist they picked for this particular project has really nice clean work they definitely didn't do a very good job of making characters that would be fun to play for women and typically i always go for the barbarian but i'll also go for a cool barbarian if it's a cool like female barbarian like if it's like Cool characters on side. I'm like, oh, she's got a freaking tiger and an AK-47. I want to play that character. There's no female characters in here that I would want to play as a guy, which sucks because that limits my play style to only half the characters in this game. And the half of them I just really wouldn't want to play because I don't want to run around like a floofy little ranger being like, oh, I stab you in the back. The biggest thing why we were bringing this up is because the comments on it's gotten intense. this particular Kickstarter are hostile. So I recommend if you are backing this game and you don't want to um oh yeah you might not want to yeah you might not want to engage in the comments you might not want to hang out in the comments area or i mean i guess if you really like drama like go oh, hit up the comments like whatever you want to do but it just as a fair wow. warning just as a fair warning if you think that you're going to run into something upsetting about somebody telling people why the game industry should or should not be changing or whatever like i would not specifically go to the comments Here, here's the deal unless something's changed recently it's uh the team is like three guys yeah like three men right i shouldn't say guys like three men is who run the company and it's really easy to hit that blind spot of just going like oh yeah this art looks cool like this when is i good. looked at yeah. it originally i thought oh this art looks cool but i also didn't really focus on the female characters i looked at like like well the cool barbarian and the rangers but i didn't really super focus on it and i could see just missing that part, I think what it, what this game is missing is a balance. There's nothing wrong with having characters that look good, but you need to have a balance. So there needs to be some female characters in there that look like they could actually fight and that they would fight. I mean, I know like if I was a mage that's already like easily squishable, I probably wouldn't wear high heels. That's just a, <laughs> like a small thing. And art style has changed over the last 20 years, right? So basically what it's boiled down to is you have Elizabeth Hargrave who did Wingspan saying, Hey, the art on this could be better, which they have changed some of the art, by yeah, the way. Yeah. This is the better version of This is of the it. better version of the art. Saying this could be better, and then people going, no, you're trying to oppress me by saying they could change the art. You're using all your clout to ruin gambling games. This is their best Kickstarter they've ever done. Yeah. This is the only one they've ever had make a million dollars. They've hit, like, a couple hundred thousand. really? I thought they hadn't. No. no. Before, I think it was, like, $700 huh. okay. or something okay. like that. Off the top of my head. Okay. So I just think this hit that blind spot of just thinking, oh, yeah, this looks cool. Everything looks magical and awesome and stuff. It's fantasy Everything art. Everything looks like fantasy art. And then not really realizing that there's probably not any characters here that people who want to play a female character are going to really want to play. Which I feel like is, like is somewhat uncharacteristic of the art style that's been driven in the past. I feel like... Right, because their tiny epic di first, dinos have yeah. like a wide variety of characters. Yeah. I feel like what happened here was that they... Had, I don't know if you all know this, but they had a game... That was called Dungeon Heroes. And I wow, remember though. specific... Yeah. It was their first game that they had on, on Kickstarter, basically. And Dungeon Heroes was a very good game. I really liked Dungeon Heroes a lot. And I actually talked to Michael yeah, little, about it. I was like, oh my boring. gosh. I was like, you need to go ahead and like redo this game. And I feel like what they did was they took Dungeon Heroes, which had a very... I mean, Dungeon Heroes was eight years ago. The art style... In games has advanced so much. Yeah, the the in art now where the damsel character has basically is wearing like a bandana. It's like boob over... slings. Yeah, boob, boob some boob slings. slings. And I mean, the landscape has just changed so much since then. But I feel like they probably presented that to this artist, maybe. And and this is of course like me just thinking speculation. of speculation on what might have happened. This is the style we're going for because in that particular dungeon style game, you're flipping tiles over, except it's like the bad guys versus the good guys, and you're dungeoneering through a dungeon and stuff together, you know, and one's trying to stop the other person, the other person's like trying to go through the dungeon and get to the boss. But in this one, they're like, all right, this is like our new upgraded version, like this is our new version of this, where you're flipping over tiles, you're dungeoneering together, you know, you're fighting a boss together. 
and maybe they wanted to take that same sort of aspects that call back to it and the art style just turned out like maybe not the best. I mean, you all have seen some of the art styles that we've talked about being questionable. And this is actually very lightly questionable, I feel, opposed to like it's some of the other ones that we've talked about. Yeah, it's definitely not the worst. Here's a yeah. point I want to make. Can you scroll down to the Calamity character? Okay, okay. I, I think you know who she is. I think it's called Calamity. And tell me if you guys can't hear me because I've moved my mic. You moved your mic? Yeah. Okay. So we're scrolling. We're keep scrolling. scrolling. Like, where's my sexy bard at that's a man? That's what <laughs> I want to see. All right. So, all right. So this character right here, I don't know if her name is Calamity. It's, it's oh, Laura, Laura Gambit. Gambit. All right. Gambit. So obviously we know what it's referencing. <laughs> And many of you may know that I was in the infantry, right? So I had to clear caves in Kandahar, right? I was in Afghanistan. I had to clear caves. Um, so when you're looking for insurgents and you're crawling through caves and stuff, can you flip the camera real quick? There's never once been a time where I took my shirt and I was like, all right, boys, I'm taking point. Let's go clear that cave. This doesn't make sense. Does this look ridiculous? <laughs> this is a ridiculous, like, it's ridiculous enough I didn't even want to wear, like, I didn't even want to just show you my actual chest, and I'm a man. <laughs> Who would go through a dungeon like this? And you've got a whip in a dungeon. It's already a cave. That's already questionable. But who, if this doesn't look ridiculous to you, I would not want to play this character. This is ridiculous. You just wouldn't do it. Once again, I really like gambling games. I, I like all the people that work there. I think it's a blind spot. It's something I wouldn't have noticed a couple of years ago, but I definitely notice now. I would never do any type of adventuring like this. I don't know why characters would. There's no cool character in this. I mean, Assassin's Creed Bahala has taught me one thing. You can have a female character look like a BA oh, by yeah. just making them wear the same so armor. And it still looks cool. It's really so cool. Good. There's characters, there's games out there that have characters. Yeah. That it doesn't matter if they're male or female. They just look cool. And so you want to play them. <laughs> this isn't it. This is ridiculous. If that you, doesn't make you feel weird, me doing that, You got come on. a like out of Petter over that. Oh, now Doctor has twisted his shirt. I'm giving this video a like. Everybody hit that like it's, button for the Doctor. And we're not people <laughs> that, like, search out stuff for controversy. I almost yeah. didn't want to talk about this game because yeah. of that. Uh -huh. But <laughs> it's a little bit ridiculous. I mean, come on. The, who's going to... I know that if I'm going to crawl around something that's going to have spiders and rocks, that I definitely want them in my belly button. <laughs> I want the spiders to have right in the belly direct button. access to my belly button. That's what you want. You know, I mean, adventurers wear like khaki pants. You that's know, so how they don't get aliens snake bit. happen. That's how aliens happen if you get spiders in your belly uh, button. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. And that's I'm, not even a, I'm not even a person that super harps on art a lot of times. I just think it could have been better. The Clotho character is not any better. Was that one the one above? <laughs> I mean, look at this character here. Have you ever? Ever seen a shirt that works like this? Was there like expandable like, pockets in it the front doesn't. of the shirt that they could put their chest into oh. in order to make this work? Oh. And it just makes it so that the focus is on the art and not the game. And so I think <laughs> it did the opposite of what they expected. I think this put okay. a lot of focus on the art and less away from the gameplay. And I think that's a shame. I think it could have done even better. Oh, definitely. I feel like this game definitely could have done better. With I'm glad I had two all shirts this on stuff. Too, Jeff and like I said, I wouldn't get involved in any of the comments and stuff like that if if you don't have to and stuff. Like, just just get past it. And I hope that in the future that they kind of take this into their mind and they're like, oh, okay, like, They've we'll, done we'll such evolve. a good job yeah. in the past with stuff, yeah. it seems like. It seems like it was a blind spot for them and everything. I just don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's clearly for sweat control. <laughs> And this is not even getting to the fact that this is the only person oh. of color in the whole thing, too. Yeah. It's one. Everybody else is white. Or Here. there's a couple characters that are like like a red bar. I think the barbarian is reddish or something like that. Here. But I think that's more because they're like a different like a different um, species. Here's the thing. And this is this is something we had talked about, I think, like even just a couple streams ago when we actually had like full naked characters, basically. And I was like, what the heck? Like you put nothing into like making cool stuff for that character. And here's the thing, as oh, that's right. We talked about male, Forest of Radagash. Yeah, all the characters look like these really slender, really badass characters, things. and then all of a sudden you get to the women, and it's just like naked women, and then like they weren't, they lost like their badassness. They just had some weird hands, and I was like, what happened? They were weird slender. Like there's definitely with, with ponytails. Yeah, there's definitely worse out there. But here's the thing, if you are an artist and you are a male that feels like you may not be doing a female character justice, here's what you do: you draw a male character and how badass like you think that character is going to look and be and everything because you can envision themselves as you and what you would want and all these cool things 
And then you take this to another drawing table and you just like slim up the waist like a little bit and you move out the hips a little bit and then that's your character. Pretty like, much, yeah. Like, and maybe, or maybe <laughs> not, you leave the beard. I don't know. Whatever you want to do. You. Like, that's like whatever that you want to do. I'm going back okay? to TikTok. <laughs> yeah, it, like I said, this isn't one that I'd be afraid to show my kid or anything. I'm not saying yeah. it's that extreme. Yeah. But it's just enough that the focus became about the art and not the game. And it's and sad. that's, the that, it, that was their biggest mistake with it. And yeah, I think it just it was, and I feel like it is it was a mistake, honestly. Because of the the way they've improved over the years, I do think this was just a miss. I just don't think they saw it. And yeah. To be honest, I don't always see it, but there was a whole bunch of people talking about it, so I dug into Ugh. it and I wanted to see more. And I did not look at all of it, everyone. Yeah, you stayed it off was of it. it was bad enough that I was just like, I'm not gonna get involved in any of that. Like I don't. I don't need that in my life. <laughs> There's lots of cool characters out there. I mean, I yeah. play the pyromancer in Dice Throne. I play the gunslinger in Dice Throne. I don't play any male characters in Dice Throne. All my favorites are females, but I don't think of them that way because they're just cool characters. And it sucks that they just didn't spend a little bit more. They didn't ask like one person that wasn't a male, like, "Hey, does this look cool?" They probably would have got back like, "Yeah, none of these characters are like you wouldn't wear any of this stuff if you're fighting, like just period." So that's it. I mean, I don't want to focus all day on the art. That's going to be up to you. Art is mm -hmm. very mm -hmm. subjective. And I have nude paintings up in my house. So obviously we're not afraid of nudity per se, but sometimes it doesn't make sense. And I don't feel like it made sense here. There's no good balance. It should have been balanced out. Where's your David Bowie character like wearing a, like a, a V-neck and some really <laughs> tight leggings? If you're going to do it, go both ways. That's what I'm going to say. Go both ways with it. I think, too, the biggest thing out of all of it was just the community's reaction to everything. Like, we need to do better as a community to make sure that everything's, like, just, you're being kind to everybody. Everything's being inclusive. Everybody, you know, like, we're here to play board games with everybody. And if you can't pay the person across the table that you're playing, playing games with, like, respect and respect their opinions and their thoughts and their that's insights true. and stuff like that, then why are you playing board games with people? Like, that's what the hobby's all about. That's what the hobby's all about, is playing games with all these amazing people. And by excluding... Do a extra work, you by, can make it where people are going to be more comfortable to play. Right, by excluding those people from your games means you're excluding those people from your gaming table, which means that you're not enjoying the hobby to its fullest. So, like... You know, just like take a, a take some other opinions in from other people, you know, and don't, I guess like, I mean, it, it's really sad the back and forth that's happening between Elizabeth Hargrave and other people and Stan BGG. It's like bleeding everywhere at this point. It it's just it, bleeding well, all it, over the community. It's made it like worse. So, I mean, Elizabeth Hargrave has a point. You know, do I feel as strongly about it as she does? Probably not, but I'm also a male. Yeah. So it's important to listen to the people that it affects. Oh, hello. But then what happened is, is then stuff happened on BGG where people felt like, oh, no, I've been banned from BGG. And so then they yeah. went to the Kickstarter and they started and like, they just started putting these, being like, terrible. like, these three-page diatribes terrible. about, why can't you leave my hobby space alone? This is what I used to have. Why are women coming in here and trying to ruin it for me? And that just makes me want to stay away from a project is when a bunch of guys say, why are women trying to ruin this project for me? Like, why don't... I just don't understand that mentality yeah. of not wanting women to do the same hobbies as you. Mm -hmm. Do you not like women? Are you afraid of them? What is the mentality of, I like paintball, but I don't want women to play it? I don't understand that mentality. I like board games, but I don't want women around me when I play it. Why? There's something... I just don't understand that mentality. Maybe that's just me. I just... I've never understood it. I, I was raised by a single mom. My biggest influence in my, in my life is definitely my mother. And I don't understand why people are afraid of women and why they want them out of their space. I don't want women watching Star Trek with me. I don't want women watching Star Wars. I don't want women in comics. I don't want women... There's always going to be comics. If somebody draws a female Thor, guess what? There's the <laughs> other 80 years of Thor you can read. If it bothers you that much. I don't understand the mentality of keeping other people out of your game. So let's see here. Fatal Paper Cut says, I feel like, well, hello, Fatal. I feel like a whole lot of assumption is going on. Yeah, from everybody. It's a mess. It's a mess. Like I said, it's not even the worst art I've seen, but the 
the toxicity around the campaign mm-hmm. because you can't moderate. Yeah, that's on Kickstarter. Yeah, you can't, somebody can just pledge a dollar and say whatever and they say want. And unless, whatever, whatever unless they want. Unless they're cussing yeah. or using slurs, they just like it's there forever. You can't do anything yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah. And Gambling Games did put out a statement saying, "Hey, you know, like we don't support this. We we listened to Elizabeth Hargrave. We did make some changes." But you can't sit there on one side and be like, oh, the art doesn't matter. Why is everyone being such babies? Why are you trying to cancel me? And then when the art gets changed, be like, I can't back this game now because you guys slightly changed the art. It's All right. a it's gigantic mess. And it's a gigantic it mess. Is. Every In every direction. There's like not a right direction at this point. No, it's, it's such a mess. So, yeah. And Omar says, I totally agree with Dr. Glory Hogg. I was hey, raised by a single once. mom, right? Someone agreed with me. That happened. <laughs> Let's mark that down. The cal- I have a calendar over here that I have. Kevin says, apparently one of the team of artists was female. It's the graphic artist, I believe, or the terrain artist was female. Oh, okay, okay. But the artist that did the art was definitely male. And hey, women can draw sexualized women too. It yeah, happens. Yeah. But why isn't there a mix? Once again, you can I want have my calamity. sexy male bards. You can have calamity. Sexy male you bards. You can have clotho or whatever, but why not also make some women that look powerful? Why not also make some men that might look sexy? Why, like, why is it one way? And it's very, it's not one character. It's when eight characters are this way and eight characters are this way, and it, then it's a pattern, right? Hey, I can recognize patterns. <laughs> about that. So that's that's, just, that's how I feel about it. Oh my goodness! I so... do think that you, it can go out of control either way i yeah. agree there needs to be that middle ground but here's the problem is human beings in politics in life usually people are very left or right there's not very many people that can handle the middle i'm gonna tell you guys a secret i'm vegan but i don't talk about it a lot because i don't want to feel like my choice is your choice the reasons why i am and why i do what i do is my business if you want to ask me about it i'll talk about it but it's not my goal to try to convert everybody it's not my goal to make you feel bad I spent 33 years of my life eating meat, a lot of meat, and I don't regret it. People post steak recipes on our Discord sometimes. I don't get mad about it. It's just, I just know it's not for me and I move on. It's not a big deal. Like, middle ground, people. Find the middle ground. And here's the thing. Like, the industry is changing. Like I said. Well, I think they just came out with a post saying that there's more female gamers than male gamers at this point. What? Yeah, I forget where that was at. I'd have to read it. (laughs) And if you are not changing as a person in your everyday life with everything, this is going to become like a crazy episode. So <laughs> if you're not changing yourself and improving upon yourself and improving your ideas with new knowledge coming in, you are not growing as a person. So everything should be growing. The community should be growing and getting better. You should be growing as a person in order just to be happy in life. Like if being stagnant in your ideas and thoughts and everything is going to make you that crazy old person way on later in life that like oh, nobody's yeah. going to want to play board games well, with hey. okay <laughs> so a couple of really good things there's some really good comments i really like uh so what andrew said i don't have any recipes man. it's all her all day she's got the recipes and luckily arizona phoenix general area is big enough that there are a lot of vegan restaurants and stuff like that and i can get stuff i can go to white castle now and get burgers oh yeah so white great. castle i can go get an impossible burger um there's a big whole conversation here. We all know that everyone, I think, at some point in time in their life has had like that grandpa or great grandpa that was just racist and yeah. it was just upsetting and you didn't want to hang out with them. If you don't change and look at your life every once in a while and make changes to your life based off of new information, you're going to be that person. Yeah. You're going to be that person running around calling people names and slurs and stuff and not even realize it. So just try to be a little bit better, right? Like I said, I don't think gambling did anything wrong. I just think they missed it. Mm-hmm. And I think everyone can just be a little bit better. And I kind of agree with what Patrick says, that that there almost has to be a polarization before people can come to the middle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can, I can see that point, too. I can definitely see that as well, because, <laughs> man, you, need, you almost need that uprising and everything for people to go, wow, this is really ridiculous. And then, like, you can eventually settle upon that middle mark there and everything. Before these like... characters look like, like BA women that, like, anybody would want to play, I'd have no problem with it. But mm-hmm. since it's all one way or the other. It's A or B. You can either be cool male or you can be a sexy female. And that's your only <laughs> option. That's what I don't like. Explains how he got that bike to go so high. It was all that, yeah. it's that vegan. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Right. Omar says, ultimately, I don't understand why we wouldn't want to be more welcoming and inclusive. It means more points of view, more people in the hobby, more games, because more new perspectives. Oh we all benefit on it just on a base level. Absolutely. I 100% agree. I think a big issue 
was on the first post not communicated swiftly and strongly enough to lead to increasing levels. I also agree, agree with that, too. There wasn't too. a response yes. fast enough, probably, and which, to be that's fair, as a social media manager, sometimes you don't important. want to read into it. It's you important. want to leave it alone and hope that it goes away. Right, it's not gonna go but away. it's important, to though, to respond and make sure the community knows that bullying people is not something the community members should be doing. That doesn't create an inclusive community for everybody. And just communicating up front and taking that stance of being like, oh, hey, we we made a mistake. Like, we're going to fix that mistake and take that into account into the future. And just in your everyday life, everybody, if you can go ahead and do that when you make a mistake and just say, hey, I did make a mistake and I'm going to use that to improve in the future, that ends com like bad conversations immediately. People are like, oh, 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 because then they have nothing else to fight with you about, everyone. <laughs> like... Just take some of that information and, you know, put it out there and, you know, be be kind to people, even if they have different opinions. Like, we don't need the hostility, like, in the community. It's very sad, and it makes yes. me very sad. And I, then I don't get on social media because of it, so. If I, if I have, a, like, one takeaway from this is that I wish we could spend more time talking about the games and less about yeah. what's in them. So I don't want to have yeah, to deal I with games either. that have slavery in them anymore. I don't I want. Don't, I don't yeah. enjoy these conversations. I'm hot. I'm like sweating right now because I don't enjoy. <laughs> You're all these fired up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't enjoy talking about games that have slavery in them. Yeah. Let's move on. Right. We don't need it. I don't enjoy talking about games that are super sexualized. Like I would rather just talk about is this game good or not. Yeah. That would be yeah more fun for me. Are these mechanics awesome? Like yes. you know, I mean. That's the sort of, can I play this game with the maximum amount of people I want to play games with? Like, is this game right. going to play well with my kid or with my grandma? Like, those are the types of things I want to talk about. So, yeah, absolutely. As far as the game goes, mm -hmm. I think it's interesting. I don't know if I want a... In my mind, dungeon crawlers are, are meant to be epic, like mm -hmm. these big, huge things. So I don't know if it being in a small package on a small scale. It's going to make you happy. It's going to give me the feeling I want because I so rarely get out dungeon crawlers. Mm -hmm. I want them to be these big miniatures and feel like I'm fighting these cool bosses and doing all these different things. So I don't know if this is personally a game that I would play enough to warrant it. Although I really enjoy a lot of the other tiny epic games like, like the space one. Whatever the space one is, I can't remember. Tiny Epic Galaxy is probably still by far my favorite. And I really like Tiny Epic Dinos, too. I, excuse me, I thought it was good. But I think if I'm going to play a dungeon crawler, I want a big, sprawling table hog of a dungeon crawler because that's what makes dungeon crawlers unique to me. I have lots of other little abstract games or rolling rights that are small and compactable. I can take Fleet the Dice Team anywhere, and I have. Yeah. So I think for me, I want that big, sprawling thing because okay. that's what makes dungeon crawlers unique to me. But that's my perspective. I don't think I like Dungeon Crawlers as much as you do, though, either. I would really like to back this game. You know, putting all the controversy and everything aside, like, this is for me, whenever I heard it, it was a Dungeon Crawl-style campaign that was going to take about 30 minutes. I was really excited about it, and I don't know if, like, the minis are, like, a thing for me or not, because I still love the portability of having everything so tiny and everything, but I do like the fact that there's going to be, like, what, the little mini campaign thing that you can also get and stuff. Like, I'm excited about all of that. Like, I I think it'll be an, a fun, quick dungeon crawl experience I can introduce to many, many people. Yes, I have taken Fleet the Dice Team to the bathroom pattern. That's not your business. <laughs> you can play a solo pattern if you're going to be in there a while, okay? So, Doctor, would, would you back this game? Chat, would you back this game? I'm feeling pretty full up on dungeon crawlers. Okay. But... If you wanted to back it for thirty dollars, I wouldn't be like upset about it. Does that okay. make sense? Yeah, absolutely. I'm like, I don't know if, if it was just me and you weren't here on the show, I'd be like, eh, I don't know. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know if I need this one. I also haven't played it yet, though. But I'm not gonna be upset about because it it's thirty dollars. Okay. I really, I would love to back this game because I love the Gameling Game series. Yeah, I know I'm gonna true. love this game here. Like, it looks amazing. I love the portability of everything, and. I have to say to our chat, thank you so much for being so amazing in all of our conversations. Right. Like It is appreciated. I really, really appreciate everybody being so chill and everything here and just being very kind to each other and everything. Like We really, really appreciate that, and we love talking to all of you. You all are amazing. Like You make this show absolutely what it is, being able to go ahead and comment in here. We really love you guys. Like, here's, here's the deal with the community. I don't want everyone in the community to agree with me on every single thing I say 100%. I Everybody's going to be, have differences. But I'm glad that everybody yeah. in our community can at least talk about it without 
attacking each yeah, other. Yeah, there's no need to attack each other. realizing the intent behind what people are saying, because everyone's going to have different experiences. I'll tell you the most, like, probably the thing that changed my mind the most was actually going to a war zone and actually keep talking to the people that lived in Iraq. When I went to Afghanistan, we didn't talk to the locals at all, like, period, right? So my experience in Afghanistan, my seven months in Afghanistan as an infantryman was very different than my 11 months in Iraq where we actually had a translator that I could talk to. And what I learned about the people in Iraq was that they were just people. And so it made it a whole different situation for me than when I went to Afghanistan. And they were just the enemy versus when they were actual people. And I had to think about what was actually happening and why they might, their motivations behind things. Right. So I think talking to people that are different from you is very good and yeah, very enlightening. Absolutely. Very, very enlightening. And... Nobody ever listens to you whenever you are in a rage and yelling at somebody or insulting somebody. Like, you can never, true. ever Everybody get your opinion me. part. Or you can never get your opinion across with that right. sort of it's, it's always talk. difficult yeah, to get your, your point across. But yeah. I feel like a lot of what I said today could be better served on a different stream. Like, get Definitely. to know hog stream. Well, there you go. So, <laughs> Andrew says, you guys are amazing. Love the streams for a relaxing Friday evening. Uh, evening, even if sometimes they dive deep. I know We're this was a deep one it. today. This yeah. was a deep one. We I have to sometimes. Thing. We would like to. I would like to just not talk about it, but mm -hmm. I think it's important to talk about it and get everybody else's opinions and, and see what's going on. And it's, it's important not to ignore this stuff. A warning too, just if you are sensitive to those sort of things, not to go to the comments and not go looking for that information because it is not good. Oh, so. it's very toxic. In very, the comments, yeah. there's some stuff so, there that, like I read and was like mad about so petter says i'm leaning towards not backing it like i said it's mo the most interesting tiny epic to me so far yeah. i agree with that it, this is probably well you know what? our our group of viewers runs in that like dungeoneering we sort do, of yeah, yeah. a lot of because <laughs> we do as well <laughs> we're in that weird like i think i was trying to figure out like where our group runs right because we're not like a heavy cardboard group where we play these three hour long euros all the time i think we run right in that middle where it's like a marathrash and euros everything that's kind of in that midway where you have to think to play it but it's not like it's not gonna be a four hour right. game or something right. like that so i think i think this is a good fit. that sweet spot and this game probably falls in that sweet spot of something that's 30 minutes to an hour it's a dungeon crawl. You know, my personal preference is this big, sprawling, epic thing because I want to feel like this thing is happening to me where I don't think I would get that off of a tinier board and, and a smaller setup. But I could see how this would be a really good fit for a lot of people. And if you don't have a dungeon crawler, $30 to get into yeah. one to see if you like see it. See if you like it. It's good I don't one. think you can get call. into it cheaper than that besides, That's a good call. you know, robbing a friend. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for oh, joining us today. What's your number one pick? Oh, what's my burrito one? pick? Mine is Keeper oh gosh, Europe gosh. because I really want to play. I like two-player drafting and area control. That's oh, my way. gosh. What is my pick? Yeah, see, take your burrito. Oh. I like Keeper. <laughs> I, want I have all to convince her to get Keeper now. Because you want to back. She wants to back I the other back. three. The other three. Like, I, I just want the other three of them is the problem, okay? <laughs> so just all four. We'll just pack all four. We'll just, let's see. $30, $40, $40, $40. Oh, what's your pick for... Yeah, chat, what's your pick? So Patrick is saying, easy week. I kind of like Ragnaroks, but I'm running out of closet space in between jobs at the moment. Gregging it all the way. <laughs> yeah. It's only $150 if you want to back all of them, approximately. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's no problem. Just no $150. Problem. Just no problem. Just the price oh. of one primal. You could get all four. They are at least all cheaper this week. I need to like reserve my burrito decision for you, later because sure? because we're gonna play block and key and I wanna play the Ragnar Rock one, like Ragnaroks. I wanna play those I ones. I feel like Ragnaroks is the easiest one to decide on now. I think it's so straightforward. I'd lean towards Tiny Epic because I've backed the Tiny Epics before and I feel like it's gonna be really good and I've heard lots of good stuff about it. Usually like... our Tiny Epic doesn't even count as our pick because we're like, we're gonna back that one. Yeah. And then we, we talk about the other one we're gonna back also. Oh gosh. Okay, I'm gonna pick Ragnaroks just because I know that Ragnaroks for our particular family, I'd be able to play it with the kid mm. and I'd be able to play it with you. Correct. Which, like, block and key, you would not want to probably play as much, and you're not as jazzed about Tiny Epic. So, like, I think Ragnarok is my pick, and plus you do um, get those amazing pieces with the Kickstarter edition, so oh, I feel like... Sounds. Okay, that's my pick. That's my burrito. That's oh my, my burrito. Gosh, I know, feel? I'm just doing all sorts of things on the keyboard now. <laughs> Ragnarok was actually the name of my first band in high school. No, it wasn't. It was. It was called Ragnarok. <laughs> you didn't know that? 
<laughs> Do we need to worry for the upcoming weeks? Anything big coming? Yes. So two two things really really quickly. Jay Peter says Ragnarok looks great. Yes. Andrew says Block and Key or Ragnarok. <gasps> Roman Roll Gladiators. But I yes. We're not yes. going to cover Roman Roll Gladiators probably because it's an expansion. I already backed it though. And she already, already backed, backed it. it so there we go. And is there anything to worry about upcoming weeks? Yes. Super Fantasy Brawl 2. Yeah. Which I believe is going to be mostly just new mm -hmm. heroes is going to be out next week, mm -hmm. I think, on Kickstarter. And what? Doing it. Super Fantasy Brawl yeah, 2. Yeah, yeah. Fan Super Fantasy Brawl yeah. 2. Yeah. So that's one that we're mm -hmm. going to be backing probably. Oh, like definitely. 100%. Definitely. Absolutely. I don't know why I wouldn't. Because the new characters are like, uh, they like look a amazing. Cat monk. I want the cat monk so bad. There's like, a, like a fortune monk. teller looking character in a wheelchair. Yeah. There's like a jinn. <laughs> There's like a dragon <laughs> prince thing, I think. All right. And then. As far as next week, I think we're gonna be playing Block and Key, and then hopefully, I want I want to do Vampire Heritage. What what do we have? Yeah. What are you thinking? Well, I don't know. I, I guess it depends. On... We have Santorini, New York. We have. Oh, we do have Santorini, New York. Too. We have like That's a true. bunch of stuff to play. Maybe we need to do like a one of those things where everybody go ahead and like picks whatever it is. Like I don't know. I like I like Patrick there. I don't think you can show it though. Oh, I guess you can. There you go. Uh, so Patrick says, "All in," then he's in trouble because yeah. <laughs> I will say that Super Fantasy Brawl though was actually relatively un inexpensive for yeah. an arena style game. I mean, if you want to compare it to Blood to Bloodstone, which was one sixty, mm -hmm. I think it was only like what it was less than a hundred dollars for Super Fantasy Brawl. There was a lot of big ones too. What last week and stuff like there's just been a lot of big ones lately, and I'm trying to think they. We have some that are actually like we have but we're not allowed to talk about and stuff yet that I'm excited about. So like in the next few what? months, everything I'm getting she doesn't tell me. is in the next few months. Like everybody's doing what is it, January, February? I think I'm April, like, May, April, May. I think I'm like this. What I'm getting all end of the group, the Spider Man. Mm -hmm. She doesn't tell me what games are coming, so I won't accidentally. How spoil many games them. do you estimate you have in your collection? Three hundred and fifty-eight currently, and we've had over a thousand. Yeah. So there we, we scaled down. Some... <laughs> we scaled that's, down. That's my some. estimation off of when I last <laughs> like looked at BG stats type of thing. All right, everyone, we're gonna go ahead and talk to all of you later. We're actually not going to do our app-based battle stream thing because I didn't like for the king. Oh so wow! I'm sorry, I didn't like it. I haven't played it. So so instead, not I'm, playing it online. We're gonna have our Whistle Mountain in my city probably. We're gonna have a rematch, and then we're gonna talk Privately. about we're gonna talk about content we're gonna create for all you later. Maybe. <laughs> but Maybe. we appreciate you all of you being here today and hanging out with us. This is like an hour and a half, so thank yeah. you so much for hanging out with Let us. Let us know what you're backing in the comments below. Absolutely, and anything else? No, I just else? said, let us know. Okay. If you like it, like it and subscribe. Head on hey, down. Liking and subscribing is free. I that is true. Liking and subscribing free. is free. You can Those do likes. it. It costs you the zero likes. money. If you really enjoyed the doctor's half shirt look, make sure you give us a thumbs up today, okay? <laughs> on, our, on our stream. <laughs> because I'm going to pull that up and directly show doctor how, how hot he is by his thumbs up that we got, okay? okay. And Disco Discord Party. Yeah. down in the description. Okay, everyone? We'll see all of you later. Bye. Bye.